What you see before you are three different keyboards that run different price points. Starting with this one here, this keyboard in its base form costs over $400. This one here costs nearly $200. And this one here costs well under $100. So what do they all have in common? Well, they're all 75% knobbed keyboards. And while Akko has managed to keep keyboards in the space, in the DIY space, at reasonable price points and offer pretty decent offerings, it hasn't yet attained a position like this with this Mammoth 75, but does have some nice offerings in something like the Akko Mod 007. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is how can we get this closer to this in terms of price? And that is where today's keyboard comes into play. This, folks, is the MonsGeek M1. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're gonna to be talking about a new company, a company that is aiming to bring a keyboard to the enthusiast space for the at or under $100 price point. Again, enter the Mons Geek M1. So who's Mons Geek? What is Mons Geek? Well, Mons Geek is a sister or sub company of Akko. And what they aim to do with this keyboard is bring an enthusiast level of uh, quality to bring a more professional looking design with their design languages. And in addition to that, uh, they want to bring the features that are missing from some of the Akko products. So south facing sockets on their PCBs via QMK compatibility, things like that. So when they told me that this was coming out, or rather I kind of discovered it on my own through Taobao with uh, their uh, domestic release, I asked them, I was like, what, what is MonsGeek? What can you tell me about MonsGeek? Why don't we go ahead and take a look at this and see how it compares to something like the Mod 007. And then does it live up to the enthusiast marketing? So this is your M1. Very simple packaging. Now, even though Akko did send this over, or I guess MonsGeek sent this over for me to review, trust that I will give this my honest opinion. And this has a lot to live up to because not only have we looked at a lot of budget boards, but we've also looked at some pretty decent enthusiast level products here on the channel. So I have not opened this yet, uh, this is my first time opening it. I wanted to kind of save the hype for myself. So let's see what's in the box. So right out, out the gate, there are some things that we need to discuss. So when they talk about providing an enthusiast level experience, they kind of give you everything that you need to build the board. This, <laughs> this is a sheet of tape mod. A full sheet and we're starting to see that more and more included in kits so I think that's kind of neat uh, you know hopefully it's not necessary to uh, make the board sound good but it is neat that it's included you get a nice uh, pretty decent coil cable it is not braided but uh, it's rubberized it's pretty decent though we also get stabilizers so this is one thing that I thought was pretty cool and we thought we should discuss. These are PCB mount stabilizers and they come in a bag rather than already on the board. So that way you can lube them yourself and really tune them to how you would like them. So we're gonna kind of take a look at these. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss them after I get them lubed up in the, and on the board. And then we get a nice little kit of screws. And then the board itself. 
Now, one thing I'm not seeing here that I was looking forward to seeing was that if you do buy this, they also include little Teflon strips that can be used for force break, which is pretty cool. Like they really thought about what was needed in the enthusiast space, what we're doing to our boards in the enthusiast space. So here is the board itself. It comes in a nice little PE sheet. So you could use that for another build of some sort or maybe use it here, but I don't think it's necessary because this should come with all the goodies. Now we're talking. Okay, okay. So it does come with a little dust cover, which is nice. Sometimes people like to just set this over their board to keep the dust out of it. I never use them, but it is a nice addition as always. So we have some 3M cutout stab pads here. So those can be used and uh, they are smooth. They're not rough, so they shouldn't mute too much. I don't typically use those, so I probably won't use them here. So here we get a 75% professional, aesthetically pleasing board that can be used for, according to their marketing material, for gaming and office use. Uh, one of the things that we get here, which I teased um, on, on the Instagram was this side profile. So we get a pretty sleek, simple, minimalistic side profile, but we get this nice little addition of like this gold colored accent and they offer that in other colors too for like the special, they're having like a special Christmas edition, which is pretty neat. One of the things that was touted was their, their new knob design. So the new knob design for the Mons Geek over the Akko is they've apparently paid special attention to make sure that there's no issue with the knob rubbing. So some users have reported that in their, their mod series boards. I didn't really experience that. It really just comes down to a plate alignment issue in my experience. So if you align your PCB assembly before clamping everything down, you don't run into that issue. But they did make the knobs a little bit smaller here so that way it's avoided. Now, in here you can see, I find this very interesting <laughs> that they did include their plate mount stabs. So I'm gonna take a look at those uh, off camera because I might steal those for another build I have coming up soon if they are the ones that have the TPU inserts. But looking here, we've got south facing sockets. You can see all the LEDs are south. In addition to that, it is hot swap. It's five pin hot swap, so we can use five and three pin switches. It comes with a polycarbonate plate. Not sure if you can tell very well, but there, there is some plate foam under there. So it, it does have plate dampening material that does appear to be uh, a neoprene or a pour on. Uh, I do believe Akko or Mons Geek uh, has claimed that this is a proprietary type foam that they have included with this. And we'll see that when we take this apart here in a moment. So we get a PE foam sheet, we get uh, mute foam for the PC plate. And as you can see here, there's not a ton of flex. It's a gasket mount board, but because we have all the foams and everything included in the base, it is lacking uh, a little bit of, of wiggle room. And, and they notate this on their listing as well. If you're interested in this, by the way, I will have a link in the description to what we'll be using during this build process. So let's flip this over and uh, let's get a better look at that side profile. That is pretty nice. I really like that, that bronze accent. Uh, it does appear just to be anode aluminum, but we'll, I'll take a look at that when we get it apart. So on the back, we just have uh, the Mons Geek sticker. No engravings like the Akko would normally have. And then the back USB port is kind of in true mod zero zero fashion but uh, it does look like there's plenty of room to get different types of usb cables in there and i have run into that in the past where some of the aqua boards you can't really get into them with some usb cords so let's go ahead and pull out our screwdriver kit here again this will always be linked in the description so this is actually going to be a, a hex 2 so we're going to go ahead and get this apart. I do apologize for any noise in the background. It is a very cold day today and I do have the heat running. So let's go ahead and get this apart and then take a look at the inside. All 
All right, we got it apart. They do appear to be using non-ferrous screws, which is kind of disappointing. I'm not sure why that is done, but it seems it's in keyboards it's used a lot. Maybe the magnetism is supposed to interfere with something. I don't know, but it is kind of a pain when you need to get a screw out and it doesn't come out. But that's okay, because it doesn't stop us from finishing the disassembly here. So we'll go ahead and take this apart. And then we got our little side pieces. Hmm. And then they've been including these sheets here, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. But we've got a JST connector that we need to pop loose. Okay, we got that loose. Now we can set get these screws out. Long ones in the back, short ones in the front. So this build is not using a uniform screw set. So we've got case mute foam. It feels very much like poron, maybe a bit denser. Again, they said they are using some sort of proprietary uh, foam there. And what this is, is this is designed to go into the bottom of the case. So we saw this on the SPR67 that we built recently. And this is designed to go into the case and you stick it to the bottom and it it's a foam but it's also like a plastic film so I, I guess that's designed to be more dense and not allow the sound into the metal we're going to build this without this and just try a classic foam situation so they did include these I did have concerns with these if I'm completely honest That is interesting. There's like some sort of like plastic on the front of it. But the concern I had is that these appear to just sit in these slots. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there is some rattle and we're gonna listen for that. But yeah, we'll definitely listen for that rattle. Now here's our south facing PCB. So let's go ahead and pop this out. And the machining is pretty good quality. It's what you would expect from an Aqua product, I feel. Uh, the only difference is, is there's like no sound chambers that are in the back of the mod series. And we are using our silicone gaskets. So they are, they've also got these little notches on the sides of them. It's hard to pick up on camera, but what that does is it allows them to sit in these notches here. So there's not just cutouts for your gaskets. There's also a little notch for these, uh, these little gasket feet to sit into. I do wish that they had included Porum, but I understand, again, we're shooting for a $100 to sub $100 price point. And I believe this is $99 right now on the Mons Geek website. So again, you can see here we've got the sandwich foam. And it appears to be that same Poron type material that we found in the bottom. And then there is, not sure if you can see it here again, that PE foam. This is the intended configuration and how I am going to build it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and talk a little bit about the switches and keycaps we're using, we're going to be using. And then I wanna slap this baby together as it came to me without the Teflon strips to see if we get rattle from the sides, to see if it can compare to something like the Mod 007 at nearly half the price. And we're going to be using, for our switches today, Aco sent over some of these new snow blue gray key, uh, switches. These are switches that they've worked with uh, a Billy Billy creator to come up with. These are four millimeter travel Aco switches, which is quite different. Uh, I do believe these have, uh, if I remember correctly, they're a nylon bottom and then a palm top and then a palm stem. Now I measured the stems and they are just over 13 millimeters. So they are slightly long pull, kind of akin to what you would normally expect from a KTT switch, but they've done something with the housing. So the bottom out is a full four millimeter travel. It does use a long spring. Like we, again, we also see in Aqua switches. 
and it has a bottom out of uh, it's like 52 grams I believe so it's actuation force is about 43 grams so these are kind of like in the realm of like a, a red switch territory but a little bit different material configuration than aqua normally uses and then what we're going to top it off with today is one of their licensed keycap sets. I thought these were cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of Novel Key's purple, blue on white. And these have a very purple, blue on white kind of aesthetic, but they are based off an old Shonen Jump series, which was also turned into an anime in the 90s uh, called Saint Saya. And uh, I recall seeing this at some point in my life, but I don't remember what it is. But it has a really cool retro anime vibe to it, and the keycaps are kind of cool. So for now, we're going to be doing this, trying this camera angle out, and then I'm going to work on getting a second camera up there. So that way I can do some more close-up stuff. But I think those are pretty cool. They've got purple main legends, their sub-legends are blue. It very much is like a, it's a muted purple, blue on white. And then you get some of these like uh, novelty keycaps to go with it. And uh, I might as well go ahead and show off some of those novelties real quick. Cause I'm not a huge fan, so I probably won't be using them, but I mean, that's, that's pretty dang cool. So you've got your, your accent stuff. But I will primarily be using, the only novelties I'll be using will be the arrow keys because there's no standard arrows here. And then I might have to use some of the other ones because it is a 75%. So why don't we go ahead and get started. And then what we'll do is I'll do the build. I'll talk about the build process. After we talk about the build process, we'll move on into a sound test and we'll talk about the final thoughts of the overall board. So why don't we get started building? There you have it. There's the build. Um, you know, I had some nitpicky things, but overall I think it's, it's a pretty decent build. So let's talk a little bit about the stabilizers. They're kind of basic either way. Your, your plate mounts are, are really basic. They're not the TPU ones. Um, they would be sufficient, I think, if you didn't want to lube. The PCB mount ones are your typical screw-in like Duroc equivalents. They're keyed so that way they uh, the stems can only go in the right direction, so you can't really mess it up. Uh, when lubed with 205 and BDZ, uh, I did not do any kind of injection. There is still a little bit of tick, but I mean, they're fine. I honestly think you could 205 lube them, um, you know, maybe holy mod them and they'd be fine. Now, regarding the rest of the build process, um, pretty straightforward. Again, nothing special about those screw and stabs. Um, I will say that the only major issue that I had was once I got it together the first time, it was 110% clear that this needed a force break. It sounded incredibly hollow, and that is with all the foams. Now that's mostly what this will do for you. So if you do decide to use this, this will help capture that resonance. So again, this is that uh, weird sheet that we use in the bottom of the SPR 67, and it'll help absorb some of that resonance. But I wanted to isolate the top and the bottom. Um, I don't really get rattle from these little side pieces like I expected, but what I did have is like a really massively hollow Q1 sound. It was not something that uh, I would expect from an Akko product, but it was something I expect from like a Keychron product. So after doing that, it was rectified. So what I did was double layer painter's tape, 
on either side of the holes and then in the spots in between the holes and that seemed to have gotten rid of the resonance. As far as switch fitment, switch fitment was great. Everything went in easy peasy. Switches are actually quite smooth, unlubed stock. In addition to being uh, nice and smooth, they also have a pretty good sound. And I think lubing it would just kind of mute it and bring it up and like clean it up a little bit. But uh, on the PE foam sheet, combined with all the included foams, so far I think we got a nice clacky board kind of up my alley. Um, it sounds pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so why don't we actually uh, jump into the sound test and see what it actually sounds like. All right, oh my goodness. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. You know, when I built the, um, the top 75 using the palm switches combined with this JDA, uh, this JDA profile keycap set, I really enjoyed it. I drove that, week, that, that board for uh, several weeks, uh, over a month, and uh, I actually really enjoyed it before I ended up getting my mammoth and that started living on my desk permanently. But um, this is very akin to that sound. So what do I think about it? I, I think it's such a simple design, right? Like they've, they've obviously cut corners in cost. I mean, we've only got six screws instead of like the what, uh, eight to 12 or something like that that we would normally get in a 75%. It's enough screws that it brings everything together with a force break. The metal is thin enough that it, you know, it does cut cost, that we don't have those like resonant chambers and whatnot that we get the mods with the mod series. But, you know, for 10 cents in tape, it's rectified. And and they're going to include that when you buy it. And one thing I did for fail to mention in the beginning too is if you're not happy with the polycarbonate plate it comes with, other plates are available. This is like the first time Akko has made plates available individually for purchase. Uh, and I keep saying Akko, I'm sorry, Mons Geek. So Mons Geek uh, is going to have several different plate of options available for this board, and they're only 10 freaking dollars, 10 bucks for a plate. So if you don't want this, or you wanna try different plates with your M1, you can get several different plate options. So I'm kinda curious where Mons Geek is going to go with their line. I know they have an 1800 coming up soon and also a TKL, but I am curious where they are going to go with their keycaps and their switches. Because right now, you know, this is an this is an Ako sub brand, sister brand, and they are targeting the enthusiast and the professional space. Again, target saying that, you know, these boards are designed for low price points to uh, encourage uh, enthusiasts to kind of adopt their products more, but it's also designed to be like an, uh, like a professional environment kind of design language, right? So where are they gonna go with their switches? Cause they just released their crystal switches and um, uh, their cream switches, excuse me. And those things are super affordable, super inexpensive. So I'm kind of like, where are we going with this? Are we, are we gonna get premium switches uh, on a good budget too? Like. Aqua switches are great, and I do like how they're experimenting, but where are they gonna go with this? Are they gonna start trying to go outside the box a little bit, or what? So we're just gonna have to kind of stay tuned for that. But overall, keycaps are pretty nice. I do have one issue here is that this right arrow has got some ink on the bottom of it. So that is kind of disappointing because it is like just straight up visible. It's like right there. But, uh, you know, I'm going to chalk that up to this particular set just, you know, through QC or whatever, there was an issue. But this is my favorite profile keycaps. Like right now, like OSA was my favorite. 
but when I got these JDA ones, they they really, really do something for me. So yeah, definitely take a look at their JDA keycaps. I'll have a link to the JDA profile or just the keycap section and you can filter out what you're looking for. I mean, you can see that you know on the channel we've, we've done other types of aqua caps. Um, I'll also link to the board on Mons Geek. Um, and I will link to the switches on the Aqua website or Aqua website as well. Uh, if you do click on those Aqua links, uh, it, they are affiliate links, so they will help out the channel a little bit. Unfortunately, though, I don't have any uh, affiliate for Mons Geek just yet. I'm hoping to work that out soon, but I'm really looking forward to covering their other boards. So uh, what I'd like to do is finish up this video with uh, just kind of a comparison to some of those other boards. Um, I'm going to omit the 5075 and what we'll do is uh, we'll do some sound tests, sound demos with uh, this again. We'll run the sound demo again for this. And then we'll also include the Mod 007 with, uh, with Athlon Tropical Waters from Keep Hut. And then we'll also do the Mammoth, the 400 something dollar keyboard uh, with my new Athlon runner switches which are also available on Keeb Hut and R&D KBD in the US. I'll post a link for those in the description too, so that way if you're international, you can check out your local vendors. But yeah, I really appreciate you hanging out with me for this build. I hope that if you've been looking for something like this, if you've only got a hundred bucks to spend on a bare bones and, and this is your thing, definitely pick it up. It's, it, it's a solid win. Like for a hundred bucks, you can't really beat this. This is even better deal than the next time 75. That was like 120 on AliExpress. But yeah, thanks, thanks guys for hanging out with me. It's fun as always to be able to sit here and do this with you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the sound test coming up and I hope you guys have happy holidays ahead just in case I don't get another video out next week. But again, thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, y'all have a good one.